The United States and the United Kingdom are by far the worst countries in the world to go to college in if paying for it is a problem for you. Let me give you an example of how different it could be. I'm going to give you the name of eight countries in Europe where tuition is either zero, which is in most of them, or very close to zero. Trivial, a couple hundred bucks uh, per semester to go to college. Ready? Here we go. Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, France, Finland, Greece, and Poland. These are countries that range from quite wealthy to quite poor. They provide free education right through undergraduate and graduate education. Mexico and Brazil, really poor countries, they do it too. That's right, don't have to pay for school if you go to college or graduate school. China does require you to pay, but it ranges their tuition from $2,500 to $10,000 a year, much, much, much cheaper than in the United States. What's going on? Every one of those countries justifies free education on the grounds that educated people make a better and richer contribution to the society in which they live. They learn something and that learning comes back. It's a good investment. It's even better than that. It's about the best investment you can make in the long-term 50, 60 year productivity of the man or woman who gets a good comprehensive education. So, of course, the society subsidizes it. And you know what? It makes them more productive. And you know what that does? Makes them more competitive in the world economy. But the United States and Britain are cutting back, not doing that, racking up the price of education and imposing enormous indebtedness on students who want to get an education so they can contribute better and more to the society. This is a sure sign of where the world is declining in the US and UK and where it isn't in the societies that are investing in the precious commodity known as our young people wanting an education. And so in the United States, students who still decide to go have to rack up debt. And I wanted to give you an idea, in case you're wondering, yeah, debt per student is higher in the United Kingdom and the United States than anywhere else. They're not even close. And here's the number to keep in your mind for the United States. In 2016, there were 171 million adults in the United States. That's people who aren't kids anymore, but are 60 years of age or younger. That's what we mean by the adult population, right? 44 million had student debt out of the 171. That's one in four adults has student debt. And here are the averages in 2016. We're five years later now. All these numbers would have to be adjusted. In 2016, the average debt, $37,000. And it was costing the average graduate $400 a month to service the debt. The smartest people in many ways, the ones with the best chance to get an education, borrow money, go to school, and are left with tens of thousands of dollars paying $400 a month in order simply to service the debt. You're making college impossible. And part of the th reason for all of this is the notion, we should make the students pay rather than subsidize this education the way all those other countries do. Privatization of education. Remember, Betsy DeVos, that was what her slogan was. And here, I hope you've understood what the costs of that are to those individuals, the 44 million adults, and to our society, which is the bigger loser for this mentality.